Welcome to Off The Play. Have a very, very special guest this afternoon. That's why I'm wearing this jumper, mate. Do you recognize this jumper, Adam? A very special yes. Brisbane. Yes, well, Brisbane. actually, it's not the Brisbane Bears jumper. It's a, technically a Brisbane Lions heritage jumper, but a great design. I spoke to a mate of yours, one of the great AFL legends in Daryl White. Now, one of the infamous stories about Daryl White is when he arrived at Brisbane Lions, there's stories about him chucking his mountain bike off a cliff, refusing to do pre-season training under Robert Walls. Um, and one of his favourite stories was what he'd get up to at his house back then. He was a few little NT boys running around um, in the Brisbane Bears back then. But Whitey was talking about how he'd go to Bunnings and create these makeshift backboards and there'd be backyard cricket and all that sort of stuff. Now, you live with DJ, so can you tell us what it was like living in that house? Yeah, it was, um, it was really, you know, funny and excited to, you know, stay with Whitey. And, um, you know, we played, as you said, we played backyard cricket and um, front porches and, um, you know, uh, one... That pre-season training, um, you know, it was it was really hard, and um, I think DJ DJ didn't you know didn't like the way the training was planned, and and you know he, he got really frustrated, and then and he threw that bike off the you know nearly off that cliff, and he said, "I'm here to play footy, mate. I'm not here to ride bikes." And yeah, and that's what that's what he said. Uh, I'm here to play footy not not you know do this hard training yeah. but you know that's that's AFL life and um, you know you have to do those those training you know what it's required to um, you know to build yourself mm. uh, to get fitter yeah there was a story a couple of years ago where Shane O'Sullivan said that when you first moved down to Brisbane um, there was an incident where you were basically had a nightmare at night and you were sleep uh, talking or sleep walking and he come in to check if you're all right and then you basically didn't want to cause a big fuss so you offered to sleep outside and all that sort of stuff it must have been uh, such a very different environment growing up on the islands and then moving down to like you said before the big smoke of yep. Brisbane it's not Melbourne but it's still Brisbane <laughs> definitely the big smoke um, yeah. how did you find I suppose adjusting to life off the field so not at the club but just living in Brisbane as an 18 year old yeah it, it's it's pretty you know it's totally different to where I actually grew up on on, on Tiwi Islands and uh, going down there and you know in the, in the big city you know changing that lifestyle um, that that story you know Shane told and I, I actually did sleep outside because um, you know I, I had that dream of um, talking to probably spirits yeah. you know um, Probably one of my ancestors, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it was. He actually came and found me, and and I think woke woke me up to go back in the in the house. Oh. And I actually did. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I was sleepwalking then. Yeah. Right. Um. The how did you adjust to the difference in training standard? You did touch on it before with. Uh, Daryl White saying that it's a necessary part of um, playing AFL football, training really hard and doing all that things. Did you find it difficult to adjust uh, growing up on the islands and then you played a little bit of football at uh, North Darwin in the NTFL, but did yep. you find it difficult to adjust to that level of training? Yeah, it is, it's um, why we're back home on the island, we, you know, we, we train hard and you, know, you, you have that dream to pursue to play AFL and and that was that, that was my ambition to um, you know train hard and you know hopefully come to down and play a lot of footy and and you know get probably noticed by you know recruiters uh, from the AFL so I actually adjust that training and to over there, that life, lifestyle of the environment of, you know, um, the hard, the more harder physical training. Yeah. So I started to get used to that training and, um, you know, I just continue on training and, and, and that's, that's why I ended up playing in that last three games of the, of yep. that season. 
How was your relationship with Robert Walls? There was a story that he said that his communication with you over the preseason was he called up the local priest on the island and he would find you and then you'd get back in contact with him. Was he, uh, I spoke to Dale White and I was very interested in his reflections on Robert Walls. He said that he was the greatest coach that he's ever had and a great mentor. What were your memories of Robert Walls? Yeah, Walsy, Walsy was, uh, was great and um, he, um, yeah, I wanted me to go back, but um, I've, I've lost that, you know, um, that desire to pursue my footy career. Yeah. And I chose, I chose to live back home. Um, but no, no doubt, Wolsey was uh, really tough, and um, you know, he didn't like players that. Um, train you know underdone training mm. he, he got everyone you know up and running and, and that was yeah it was yeah he's I, I think he's still the best best coach I had back mm. in that in that in that year mm -hmm. uh, Adam you definitely had the talent to have a long career at AFL level. I think uh, your performances back locally in the NTFL speak for itself. Uh, there was a 2004-05 season for St Mary's where you played probably the best half a season um, of NTFL football that nearly anyone could remember. So you definitely had that talent. Um, and that was 12 years after your AFL career. So you could have had a long career there. What were the reasons why uh, I suppose you felt homesick? And do you have any regrets about the way your AFL career ended? Yeah, I, I had, I have regret um, for um, not pursuing my my dream of playing AFL, or probably playing probably over over 150 games, and um, that's why uh, I still, you know, those those memories still creeps up to me, mm. um, and that's why my my boys always tells me, you know, Dad, you should have just, you know, kept going. Um, but now, um, it's history now, and, and I can't, you know, rewind it back to to that day where I should have, you know, um, but I still have my, I still have that regret of not, you know, um, following it through. Yep. One of the proudest memories, I'm sure, was representing the Indigenous All-Stars against Collingwood, as you said, record crowd uh, at Marara Stadium. One of the most iconic games of football, I think, in uh, Territory football history. Everyone always has a memory. What are your memories of that game? Yeah, it was a big crowd, and I think it was, uh, I think it was celebration of um, showcasing our Aboriginal culture and, and um, to have played alongside of those brothers, um, uncles, and um, you know, it, it, it's it's a, it's a dream for any any Indigenous fellow, young fellow, to go and play with you know your, your mm. family members and um, your your heroes and um, people that. Um, that you've seen on TV playing AFL football. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was great. Adam, last question, mate. What are your thoughts on the current AFL game? There's a lot of criticism about the way football is being played. Do you still watch AFL regularly? And uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I still watch AFL football every 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 Thursday Thursday night and uh, Friday nights and Saturday. Um, Probably not not most of the time, but I'm out, you know, camping or mm. doing hunting and mm -hmm. fishing and you know getting bush tucker and that and mm -hmm. to feed feed my family and that. Yep. But w when I have the time to sit down and relax and watch AFL football and um, the 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 AFL today it's it's um it's totally different change mm. yeah compared to 
the early early nineties. Um, it's you got you know uh, three umpire systems and mm. you know which is great because uh, it makes makes sense that um, you know I wish we should have had that you know three system back back when we were playing. Mm. So yeah, um, I still I still watch AFL football and. Did you go for Frizzy? Yeah, I go for the lines. Uh, still, very, I'm, I'm actually still one eye lines. <laughs> um, they're going all right. Yeah, they're going all right this year, and um, hopefully, I can. You know, who, who knows? They, they just missed out on on a, on a grand final last year, so oh, I think they might. You're dreaming, mate. I'm a Tigers supporter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much yeah. for joining us, Adam. Thanks very much for watching. Um, please subscribe and give this video a like. Cheers.